Okay, so today I want to talk about a new CSS property, a relatively new CSS property called aspect ratio. Now, I'm sure you've seen situations where you've got image tags that are loading on the page, and if you haven't in the HTML explicitly put a width and a height in, you know that this is going to be just sort of a, a blank little spot on the page, and when the image loads, it'll expand and then pushes the other content out of the way. Once the image is loaded, there's a built-in aspect ratio that's intrinsic to the image. If, in your CSS, you provide a width for this, the height will become auto, and that's because the browser understands the aspect ratio. What is the ratio of the width to the height of this image? Well, this new aspect ratio property, what it's going to do is it's going to let us set that property in here so that it will render your blank image at whatever the width and height are that you've got set on that image, it'll hold the space for it automatically before the image loads. But beyond that, we also get to use aspect ratio on other elements. So here, for example, I've got a few elements, a few paragraphs, and I'm using the aspect ratio property. So let's take a look at how we're doing this. So I've got some default styling on the paragraphs here. Let me zoom in a little bit on this content. I've got some default size, uh, padding, box sizing, background color for all my paragraphs. Uh, the last paragraph, I'll come back to that one in a minute, but one, two, and three. These are the, this, these paragraphs right here. I've got a width set on all three of them, and then I'm using the aspect ratio property here. So one to one, width to height. Three to one, width to height. Four to two, width to height. So because this is 200 pixels wide, it's going to be 200 pixels tall without me specifying a height. This second one, three to one, well, if it's 300 pixels wide, it's gonna be 100 pixels tall. And the last one, 400 wide, 200 tall. And just to show that I could change it, let's say four to four, so it's a one to one ratio, 400 pixels by 400 pixels. So we can play around with these numbers as much as we want to resize other elements. Now it is fairly new. Um, I've got a copy of this page open here in Firefox. So I render this and we can see here, here's my one to one ratio, my two to one, my four to one ratio, oh, sorry, three to one and four to one ratios. The reason that this is running in Firefox, if you open this page in Firefox right now, you'll find that these all have the same height. It's They don't have the height controlled by the aspect ratio. If you want to play around within Firefox, it's still a property that's hidden behind flags. So if you've never worked with flags before, the URL that you need to go to is about colon config. If you go to about colon config, you can search through all the properties. The one that we're looking for is layout.css.aspectratio.enabled. You can toggle that true and false. So if I put that to false and I come back here and I reload my page, this is probably what you're seeing right now if you're loading this in Firefox. I come back in here, aspect ratio. I'm gonna turn that back on, toggle it true. I'll reload my page. And there we go, the aspect ratio property is now working. Okay, the one last part here, the last child that I wanted to talk about, that's this one right here. So I've got an image inside of a paragraph. The paragraph itself, I've set the width to 400 pixels, same as the paragraph above it. Aspect ratio, one to two, so this is actually 800 pixels. It's a little deceiving to look at. It doesn't quite look like it's double, but I added a script down at the bottom just to prove the point that it is. If you run this, I'm getting the client height of this last paragraph. It'll write it out in the console. It'll tell you that if it's 400, it's 800. And you can play around with the width and you will get the number that is double whatever your width is. Now, this is something right here, data width, data height. Um, these aren't, they're data properties, which means they're not properties that exist as part of the HTML standard. They're just properties that I made up. Um, if you don't know anything about the data properties, uh, the data set properties, I've got a, a link down in the description. You can learn more about those or right here on the screen, you can learn more about those. Um, eventually what we're gonna be able to do is put things like this 
we'll be able to extract those values and then use them in our CSS. So here, like this, aspect ratio, and I use the attribute method to retrieve those values. The problem is that the values for the attribute method in CSS are still a little bit experimental. Right now it reads all the attributes as strings. These meth this aspect ratio property needs number and a number. So because they're not numbers, they're not integers, this is going to fail. It's not going to do anything to us. We have to actually write it out ourselves. We have to hard code it. Now, the one exception to that is the image element. The image element, if you are actually using the width and height attributes inside the element, like down in here, in my image, if I actually put a width and a height inside of here, those ones can be picked up. And the image is the only element that will do this right now. Um, in the near future, hopefully, all of these elements will be able to do the same thing. And this is what I talked about at the beginning. If you've got the width and height, this is how CSS is going to do the same thing as that width and height um, attribute in the HTML do by creating that aspect ratio, creating that space for you. Okay, so that's it. The aspect ratio, new property, really new. Firefox, you got to turn on the flag to make it work, but it will run in Edge. It will run in Chrome right now. And um, just something to start thinking about and planning for, because in the not too distant future, this will be something that we can use to create things like cards and um, maybe image slideshows, elements that we know what we want the aspect ratio to be. And we can just set a width and then control the height based on the width or vice versa, set a height and then control the width based off of that one number. All right. So I hope that helps you out. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. I'll answer what I have time for. If you found this helpful, please share it. Please subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.